Thank him for his death on the cross of Calvary. Thank him for the price he paid to save your family, to save your soul, to save your health. Say, Father, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Father, we worship you. Lord, we exalt your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some years ago, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some years ago, I had a dream where I saw people that were dead or lifeless. And they were on the ground, and I was pouring water on them. A voice told me to keep pouring the water, that the only way they could be alive is by this water I'm pouring, that if I stop pouring this water, they are going to die. And I was pouring water at a hand, my, at a time, my hand started paining me. I was feeling pain in my hand. And I was telling the voice that was talking to me, please, my hand is paining me. Say, if you stop, they are going to die. I was pouring that water, even though my hand was paining me until I woke up. And what woke me up was a call that my elder brother had accident. In the car was my younger brother, and uh, one of his child, I think, and one of his friends. The car entered under a trailer. The car was squeezed, but nothing happened to them. When the police came to rescue them, they said, this cannot be possible that they didn't sustain any external injury. They took them for examination to see if they sustained any internal injury. And after examining and everything, nothing was wrong with them. They just went, by the time I came to hospital, they were, I met them at the gate coming out. I said, what happened? They said they have checked them. There is no, no internal injury, no external injury. But the car was destroyed beyond recognition. How did they come out before the car got squeezed? How we are there squeezed inside the car? Nothing happened to them. If you know how much what your prayer does in someone's life, in your own life, even if you are tired, you'll be praying. Even when you don't feel it, you'll be praying. Even when you don't have the time, you'll be praying. As busy as I am, I will still be praying. While on the road, I am praying. While I'm doing anything, I'm praying. Because I knew that someone's life is dependent on this prayer. Someone's deliverance is dependent on this prayer. Someone's victory is dependent on this prayer. As you pray tonight, heaven will open unto you. I say, heaven will open unto you. Heaven will open unto you. Heaven will open unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone was talking to me yesterday night and she said, because of severe leg pain, she couldn't, she was not able to walk for a long time. She said, at a time, agency that we are giving her shift, stop giving her shift. They told her, woman, whenever we give you shift, you don't do the shift. She said, how could I tell them that I'm being attacked? She said, when she's at home, she will not feel any pain. But as soon as she booked book the shift that she's going to walk, severe pain, headache, body pain, leg pain, she will no longer be herself. She will go to work, she will become uncomfortable. But once she's at home, she can walk around and feel freely. Tonight, that power shall be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Just a quick one. Revelation 12, verse 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you there? Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. He said, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Hallelujah. I'm preaching on part two of how to plead the blood of Jesus. Listen, I'm going to be sharing this series to help some of us know the privilege we have, who we are. And what we can do through him. Who we are in him. And what we can do through him. Many of us. We are complaining. Asking God. Why is this thing happening? Why are you not doing this? Why are you not changing this? Why is this not happening? But it's not always. The responsibility of God. To do something. There is something God has given us to do. 
some of us that are parents, at a time it is your responsibility to feed your baby. Make the food, come and sit down, and put the food in the mouth of the baby. At a time, the baby has grown. So all you do is to cook the food, fetch the food, and give the baby. The baby will have to fetch the food from the plate to the mouth. You are no longer putting it to the mouth of the baby. At a time, the baby outgrows where you can fetch the food. When the baby is hungry, say, son, you know the kitchen. Go and get food for yourself. A time comes where you no longer go to the kitchen to cook. Before now, you cook, it will fetch and eat. Before now, you cook and fetch and feed. But now it grows to a point where you can go to the kitchen and fetch the food and eat. Now it gets to a point where it's not only you telling the person, just go to the food, the food is in the pot, go and fetch the food and microwave and eat. A time comes when the child will have to go and cook. All you have to do is to buy foodstuffs and keep in the house. Make sure there is enough food in the house. Anybody that wants to cook, go and cook whatever you want to eat and eat. A time comes when you no longer go to shop the food. A time comes when you only provide the money for the child to fetch the food, buy the food, cook the food, and even cook for you. But a time comes when the child will have to work for the money. God expects us to grow in our work with him. Where we just read from says, and they overcame by blood. Whether you accept it or not, whether you believe it or not, there are wars. There are battles. Battle is going on. My heart ble bleeds. Whenever I see what is happening in the spiritual world, and many Christians are not even aware. <laughs> Battle is going on. The other day, <laughs> I don't know what was flying on the air, and some building we are sinking, destroying. This is a weapon that is mass destruction. We are going down. People say they're out of COVID. The one that is worse than COVID is coming. If we know this and we keep running to Jesus, running to Jesus, running to Jesus. And that is why we need so much about the revelations on the blood of Jesus. The revelations of the blood of Jesus to fight this battle, to stand firm, to stand strong. No matter the shaking, no matter the attack, we become unstoppable. I told us that in the Old Testament, in, in Exodus, the Bible said, and God told them, kill a lamb and pour the blood on the doorpost. So that when the demon of destruction, the demon of sickness, the demon of death, the demon of divorce, the demon of barrenness, the demon of failure, when they see the blood, they will pass over you and not touch you. And the Bible told us that that lamb that was killed was Jesus. That this is the shadow of Jesus, the lamb for sacrifice. That the lamb has been poured for us so that when sickness sees us, it will not come near us. How come many Christians have still been defeated after this blood has been shed? That is where the question comes. How come many Christians are still poor after this blood has been shed? How come many Christians are still being sick? Apostle Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians. He said, for many of you are being sickly and even dead. For not knowing how to apply this blood. He said, many take this communion unworthily. What does it mean to take the communion, the blood of Jesus unworthily? He said, when you don't have the revelation of the blood of Jesus. He said, when you are taking the blood, you should take it as if Jesus dies now. Because Jesus is still bleeding. If not, if Jesus has stopped bleeding, the blood will stop working. The blood is still being poured. The blood is still flesh at the altar. Because normally the blood, the, normally the high priest goes to the altar once in a year to offer that lamb, to offer it for the people and for himself. But he entered once, once, and poured his blood. And the Bible told us that in, in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1, that there is a basin, there is a fountain of blood in the throne. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. The blood of Jesus is still fighting for us. The blood of Jesus is still standing for us. The blood of Jesus is still strong. The blood of Jesus is still powerful. It's a revelation that all the power of God is in the blood of Jesus. All the power of God. That the blood of Jesus contains all the powers of God. Just as I told you that the name Jesus contains all the names of God. For instance, when God called his prophets, called the men of old, 
and to Moses, the Lord is my banner, to Joshua. So he gave them name, I am that I am, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Tisekun, Jehovah Tisabera, all of that. But all the names of God is encapsulated in that one name, Jesus. All the names of God are invested in that name. And all the power of God is in that name, is in that blood of Jesus. When you call the blood of Jesus, you are invoking the powers of God. The spirits of God. The forces of God. The anointing of God. The power that made God, God. There is so much power in the blood. That even the other kingdom cannot operate without blood. That when anybody is losing life. The first thing they do is to check the blood, to transfuse blood. There is so much power in the blood of Jesus. We don't, we don't experience this power when we don't know how to apply the blood of Jesus. When we lack the knowledge on how to plead the blood of Jesus. And I told us last week that Jesus bled seven times. I told her that Jesus, the first time he bled was when he sweat on his face. The blood that came out of his face. The second time he bled was when they put the thorns of heart on his head. And the blood gushed out from his head. I told her the third time he bled was when they pierced the hand. When they nailed the hand. And the fourth time he, played, he, he, he bled was when they nailed the leg. The fifth time. He bled was when they pull his beards. Jesus bled and bled and bled when the blood finished out of the altar. Listen, while he was bleeding, his spirit was leaving him because the life of the flesh is in the blood. His spirit was leaving him. While he was bleeding, healing was going on. Deliverance was going on. Redemption was going on. Salvation was going on. The blood began to travel into generations. Begin to travel into generations. And Bible said, when he died, he carried that blood to present. Normally, a high priest will kill a lamb and fetch the blood in a basin. And take the blood to the altar. To go and sanctify the vessels of the altar. To go and sanctify himself and families and the rest. But these days, Jesus being the high priest... Died for himself. Hi, yeah, the hush. Normally, a high priest kills a lamb and take the blood for sacrifice. But the high priest is now the one dead, and he used his body, himself, his blood as the sacrificial. He became the sacrifice. He off, I didn't come to offer anything. I came to offer myself. That's why Paul Spoh was talking. He said, give, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. He said, for no man died for himself. Therefore, no man should live for himself. Say, no man die for himself. He said, when he did that, he reconciled men. Back to God. He restored us back. I was talking to one of my daughters. I said that a natural man, most of my daughters say they are looking for true love. I said that a natural man cannot love. It's women that love. A natural man cannot love. He said, no. No. She was trying to. I said, okay. You are free to talk. She said, no, but God is love. So if God is love and he created us his nature, then we are equally love. Why can't a man love? <laughs> I said the truth is this. The natural man, God is not natural. God is not natural. God is supernatural. The natural man is a man that is falling from the realm of God. A man that is disconnected from the realm of God. A man that is reduced from the realm of God. A man that is reduced to an ordinary mortal cannot love. He takes that, that, that supernatural man, a man with the spirit of God, because love is the fruit of the spirit. So when a man doesn't have the spirit of God, he cannot love. That's why when you meet a man who doesn't have the spirit of God, he loves you now and he hates you tomorrow. 
It's that spirit of God. It's that supernatural that makes the difference. When we don't understand this, we follow things in the natural. We begin to worry and question God. Somebody was asking me. That was a serious question. Because of the challenge she was going through, she said, but why has God been silent on my matter over the years? And I replied, there are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. The spiritual realm is a mystery. There are spiritual laws. For instance, if your father, when the father that gave birth to you, or your mother, or your grandparents, handed over your generation to a Satan, to idol, to a certain spirit, God is not involved. Remember that they have right over your life. Remember that they use their power as your biological parents and handed you over to a certain spirit. Until you have the knowledge of what was done on the cross and begin to fight for your freedom and go for it. If you are sitting at the wall and blaming and questioning God, it's not going to change anything. Somebody who mistakenly got a wig. I'm going to share deep, deep revelations now, then we close. We pray and close. Somebody who ignorantly got a wig that is produced in the marine world or got a cream or perfume that is produced, that was produced in the marine world and the spirit they put on it is that anybody that wears this automatically has a spirit husband or spirit wife. And you ignorantly not having the spirit of discernment, you carry it and war and put it on you and you go. That spirit enters you. You have violated spiritual law. Somebody who mistakenly have an intercourse with a man who has, who, who, how do I put it? A man who's, who belongs to an altar, whose father is a witch doctor. And the curse on that family is that anybody this man touch will not be, will not be fruitful again. The law in that family is that this one is their own. For instance, if a man touch a daughter of Jezebel, you wouldn't know. You see the physical body, but this is the daughter of Jezebel. By spiritual law, anybody that touches this one is already a captive in the water world. You wake up, you pray, pray, pray. When you pray, 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 pray. Let me tell us this. When you pray, 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 you are under attack, under spiritual bondage. You pray, 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 pray. Prayer opens the door, right? Your pass, the door closes again. Each time you want to pass again, you pray. Each time you want to pass again, you pray. Each time you want to pass, the same realm, the same sacrifice you made before, until you realize the secret of what the blood has done. There is a realm where you apply the blood. To say, ah, this is the mess I did. That's why the number one assignment of the blood of Jesus is to destroy the power of sin. To destroy sin. Nothing connects man to Satan like sin. Nothing makes one a prisoner to the devil like sin. Why did Jesus come? Because of sin. Why did Jesus die? Because of sin. Why was the church established to fight sin? To preach against sin. To pray against sin. I told us on, Friday, on, 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 on Tuesday night. I said many of us, we thought that our battles are external. You know, we have to pray about other things. You know, anybody attacking me. We, we always think that all the attack is from far. It's from, it's from far. It's from somewhere else. You don't know that the movie you watch, there are demons that enter you from there. The worldly music you listen to, you have generated a satanic atmosphere. You have no idea that that person you ate with, that place you ate, that restaurant was dedicated to a spirit, to an altar. You have just eaten in a coven. You thought you ate in a restaurant. You didn't know you ate in a coven. And because the person is not spiritual, some things enter from there. Let me just go quickly and show us some things from the scripture on how to apply the blood of the lamb. How to apply the blood of Jesus. I told us that the blood was shed seven times. That the blood of Jesus contains the powers of God. And the blood of Jesus is still flesh in the basin. According to Zechariah chapter 13. 
in verse 1, he said, there is a fountain of blood that cleanses sin. Apostle Paul was speaking, he said, I, he said, I tell you that no man should sin, but should in case anyone sin, we have a mediator. There is that blood that speaketh better to him than the blood of Abel. But many times we are not broken enough to go and cry to God for mercy. We are quick to bind and lose. We are quick, you know, to question God. Is, he my, is my sin worse than any other person's sin? God will judge you for your own sin and judge another person for his own sin. Remember, Jesus first came as the lamb. He came. Now, he seated as our lawyer, as our mediator, as our advocate. Right? Right now, Jesus is our advocate. He's pleading on our behalf. He's speaking for us. That's why no matter the sin you commit, so long you have become born again, all things pass away. So long you become born again, your sins are forgiven. So long you accept Jesus, there is no condemnation in him. There is therefore now no more condemnation. It doesn't matter what you did. So long you have received him as your personal Lord and Savior, there is now therefore, whatever you have done, there is no sin that the blood cannot cleanse. He said, even if, even if your sin is as dark as charcoal, he will make it as bright. But listen, Jesus is not coming back to this world as, he's not coming back as our advocate, as a lawyer. He's coming back as a judge. He's coming back as a judge. There is this story that a young man went and stole and was caught and was taken to court. He, he brought a lawyer. A lawyer came and defended him in the court and pleaded for him. Because of the lawyer, the lawyer is very intelligent and well respected. Because of the lawyer, he was discharged and acquainted. The next time, and the lawyer told him, go, now you are healed. Now you are forgiven. Now you are delivered. Go and sin no more. He went and sinned again. And when he was convicted and was taken to court, the lawyer came again and stood on his on his behalf, and the lawyer pleaded guilty on his behalf and said, please, for my sake. No, the lawyer stood in the gap and advocated for him, and he was released. And the lawyer said, now you are healed. Go and sin no more. Now you are delivered. Go and sin no more. Now you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. He left and did the same sin again. And when he was allied in the court, he didn't meet the lawyer. The lawyer he knew before, his lawyer, his former lawyer, was now the chief judge. And he was condemned. Jesus is not coming back again as an advocate. He's coming back as a judge. Is the hard truth the church doesn't want to know. If you're a Christian, be a Christian. If you're a Christian, be a Christian. In words, in thoughts, in action. Jesus is coming back again. Not as a lawyer, but as our judge to come and judge us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Open your Bible. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke 22, verse 44, ladder. Luke 22, 44. Let me show you something there. Luke 22, 44. Are you there? Twenty-two forty-four. He said, "And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and the sweat was as we are great drops of blood falling down to the ground." Listen, how do you play the blood of Jesus? I told us that the blood was shed seven times. I'm going to show us the ten ways you can play the blood of Jesus, or ten areas. You can plead the blood of Jesus. Number one, 10 ways or 10 areas you can plead the blood of Jesus in your life. 10 ways on how you can plead the blood of Jesus. Look at how Jesus prayed. Listen. He prayed and sweat and the blood start gushing out. Prayer is a labor. You have to see prayer as labor. Another word for prayer is travail. The word translated as traveling is the word that's the same as giving birth. When a woman is giving birth, shall a nation be brought forth in one day? He said, but as soon as Zion traveled, he brought forth a man child. In other words, to deliver, to bring out that blood, you must travel in the place of prayer. 
You have to pray earnestly. Elijah was a man, natural man like us. But he prayed that there should be no rain and it rained not. You have to, in the place of prayer, pray the blood as if your life depends on that blood. You are calling on the blood of Jesus. I mean, take time to spend time to pray for the blood that on my family let broad rain. You don't just, there are some, there, some of us have learned a prayer tactic or prayer method that has not been working and we keep using it. I pray with a lot of people over the years. And I can tell you, there are people that the same prayer pattern they knew 20, 30 years ago that is not working. It's the same they are still using now. It, the same way they have been praying. Their prayer life does not grow. So today, when I was praying, I told myself I need to enter another dimension of prayer. There is a phase I'm entering now. And after that phase, there is another one I'm going to enter. That by the time I come to you, I don't need to pray. Just by looking at you, whatever that is on you will begin to burn. There's a dimension of prayer that if I enter public places, if there is any contrary spirit, they will react. There are many of us, we have not learned the attitude of prayer that produces the blood. The dimensions of prayer that brings down that blood, to bring the blood down. From that basin to bring it out is by prayer. To plead that blood, some of us we just say it casually. I call myself in the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You just say it casually and left. What you are saying, you are saying it from your mouth, not from your heart. You are saying it from your mouth, not your senses. Your from it's supposed to come from inside of you. Your heart should be able to draw that blood, pull that blood. Draw that blood on this matter, on this exam. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of I release blood. Every strange atmosphere that has been fired, prepared and programmed against me on my exam day, I release the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus, I scatter your oppressions. Every negative sacrifice, speaking on my foundation, let the blood the speaker let you begin you are, you are you that night you woke up to pray the blood of jesus you call the family prayer to pray the blood of jesus you are fasting that day to pray the blood of jesus you know that that day what you are praying is that blood that blood that blood that was shed on the cross of calvary that blood that blood You realize that you are focusing. All you need is intervention from that blood. The intervention from that blood. And number two, how do you plead the blood? I told us, with your tongue, you declare. Psalm 107 verse 2. He said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. He said, let the, Psalm 107 verse 2. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. What are you saying? We are redeemed. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Araba Shantaha. You come out and say, listen, you know, let me tell us this. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the power of the enemy. <sighs> when you know your rights, I like the, 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 the terms being used in the Western world. You can't intimidate a child that knows his rights. You can't. They know their right and they will stand on it. Now, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Who he has redeemed from the power, from the bondage of the enemy. You no longer tolerate bondage. You no longer tolerate affliction. You, can't, you, you are being redeemed. You have to declare it. How did they overcome? By the words of their testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Through the words of their testimony. By the words, that means they declared at a time the battle got sore, the battle got severe, the battle becomes unbearable, and they implore the blood, they invoke the blood, they engage the blood in battle, and they overcame. Testifying what the blood did, it doesn't matter. I know my ancestors messed up. Listen, I remember some years ago, I went to my father's compound and was destroying shrines and everything, and they said to me, why are you doing this? I said, you deceived my ancestors. You deceived my parents. 
But there is a blood that is shed. There is a blood that is shed. I know I went to witch doctor out of ignorance. But there is a blood that is shed for me. Ah, shakataha. I am redeemed. I know my parents took me to sacrifice to the water world. You know, we don't even know how to plead our curse. Bible says, bring, bring forth your strong reasons. Plead your cause. Tell God the reason why he must fight for you. Bring forth your strong reasons. Look at what Cain did. He killed his brother Abel, right? He killed his brother Abel and still pleaded his cause. And he was forgiven. And God protected him. He killed his... He, many of us, I told us that prayer is you going to court. When you are going to prayer, you are going to court. When you are going to court, what do you have? Your strong reasons, evidences to win the case in the court. You are having evidences to win the battle in the court. What evidence do we have? The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that I cannot be sick. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that I cannot be poor. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that I cannot remain single. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that I cannot fail. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that I will not suffer what others suffered in my family. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that the witches and wizards cannot take this life. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence that the foundational curses, family altars cannot stop my greatness. The blood of Jesus. That is the evidence. You plead your cause. I told us that hyssop is your tongue. David was talking. He said, cleanse me with hyssop. They use hyssop to fetch the water, to fetch the blood from the basin. And they sprinkle it. Hyssop is what they use. To fetch the blood. And they sprinkle it. And the hyssop is your tongue. Use your tongue to fetch the blood in the night. Use your tongue to fetch the blood in the morning. Use your tongue to fetch the blood in the afternoon. Use your tongue to fetch the blood. Anytime you are under attack, if you wake up and you have nightmare, use your tongue as a hyssop. Your tongue is the hyssop. Use it and fetch the blood. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Until you say so. Until you declare it. And keep, you are not just saying it. For saying sake. You know, some of us, we put some scriptures on our head. But that scripture is not in our heart. You are saying it that you know it. That that is who you are. That that's what you believe. And it's irreversible. It's unchangeable. It's unbreakable. You are declaring the blood. You are declaring the blood. In the first Peter, chapter 1. If you look at verse 18 and 19. He said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. There is a first Peter. Are you there? In chapter 1, verse 18. He said, For as much, for as ye know, for as much as ye know, we have as much as ye know that ye we are not redeemed with corruptible things. You are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. Receive your translation of your fathers. Go to the next verse. But with the precious blood of Christ. What were you redeemed with? Do you know the word? Do you know the meaning of redeem? What is the meaning of redeem? What does it mean to redeem? Eh? To take back something great? Yes? Eh? To recover. You know, many of us, we use some terms and read some doses in the Bible. We don't really know what he's talking about. Somebody was saying, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I said, where is the secret place? What is the shadow of the Almighty? He said, I don't know, I don't know, but the shadow of the Almighty. Welcome. But the shadow of the Almighty. I said, what? He doesn't know what is the shadow. What is that shadow he's talking about? Okay, I shall not want, I shall, I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, I said, what do you mean by the Lord is your shepherd? What does that mean? He doesn't know. He's been quoting it over the years. If you say the Lord is my shepherd, what does that mean? He doesn't know. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? What is the valley of the shadow of death? What is the shadow of death? He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. That will very soon we are going to do some things that will shock people. 
will carry out Bible to reach. So that you know the word of God. When you are saying it, you are saying it with clear understanding of who, what Jesus has done. He said, we are not redeemed. To redeem means to bought, to purchase. When we are purchased. Jesus bought us. Transaction happened. That blood was a transaction. It was the currency he used to buy us back. He bought us back from the devil. <laughs> because Satan bought man in the garden of Eden. Jesus came and shed his blood and took us out. He bought us. He recovered us. He rescued us. He bought us back. But that's why Apostle Paul was saying that he purchased us with his blood. He is not corruptible as gold or silver, but with an impeccable blood. An impeccable blood. A righteous blood. Holy blood. He used his blood to purchase us. He said, but with the precious blood, when you say precious blood of Jesus Christ, what do you mean by the word precious? What do you mean by precious? Precious blood. Without spot on wrinkle. Lamb without blemish. Precious blood. That is what he used to redeem us. He bought us. That's what Pastor Paul was saying. He said, because he has purchased us in his blood, he said, let us no longer live for ourselves. Let us not, you know, until you come with the consciousness that you are. Should I use the word a servant to Jesus? Or should I use the word a slave to Jesus? Okay. We are slaves to Jesus. Did you get that? Okay. Let me use the language the Bible used. We are prisoners of Jesus Christ. Is that what Apostle Paul said? We are prisoners of Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1, he said we are prisoners. Philippians 1, we are prisoners. Colossians, we are prisoners of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be a prisoner? A slave? A servant? What does it mean? You don't have your own freedom. You belong to me. You were once there. I fought the battle. I won. I bought you. You are my slave. He said, for in this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner, of Jesus Christ. How does a prisoner live? There is a limit where you go to. There is a limit what you watch. There is a limit where I have this consciousness in me that I am a prisoner. I am a servant. I don't have the freedom in the world. You know, I, I could just go to holiday anywhere. I could just go anywhere. I could just do anything. I am a prisoner. When I don't feel like preaching, and it's the day of preaching. I do, it's a must. When I don't feel like praying, but because I'm a prisoner, I have to do what my master asked me to do because he bought me. He said, let no man live for himself, for no man die. Did you die for yourself? Can you even die for yourself? Eh? Can you die for yourself? He said, let, many of us are living for ourselves. That's why anytime I look at the word of God, I say, Father, I say, Father, the word of God. How many of us are living for the kingdom? How many are living? How many of us are living for Jesus? He said we are redeemed. We are purchased. We, we are bought by this blood. In Revelation chapter 5, in verse 9. He said when they opened the sixth seal, when they opened the sixth seal, he said that blood of the lamb that blood of the lamb, the blood without spots, the righteous blood. He said, and they sang a song, they sung a new song, saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred. Listen, take note of this. He redeemed us to God through what? He brought us to God. He rescued us back to God. You must be conscious of this and use it to pray. He brought us to God. He redeemed us to God. Right? He redeemed us to God by his blood. By what? What was the currency he used to purchase us? What was the evidence? He purchased us by his blood out of where? Every kindred and tongue and people and nation. When a Christian say, This is my tribe, you don't understand. 
when a Christian is still conscious of culture and tribe, Jesus was speaking what they say, you've made the word of the Lord of none effect by your tradition. He has bought us out of every tribe. So when foundational powers, when family idol, when community forces come after you, say, no, he has redeemed me from that tribe. I belong to the tribe of the Lion of Judea. I belong to the tribe of Abraham. I belong to the tribe of Jesus Christ. The tribe, look at the tribe we belong to. The tribe of God. He said he bought us from every tongue, from every race, from people. He redeemed us from people. There are people he rescued us from. That's when we are preaching the blood of Jesus. You say, blood of Jesus, redeem me from my family. Redeem me from evil people. Redeem me from my people. Redeem me from my father's house. Blood of Jesus, redeem me from my nation. Redeem me. There are people that their powers from where they are coming from catch them bound. They can't go beyond where they are. He said, he has redeemed us from every nation, from every tribe, from every country. He has redeemed us. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 7, he said, whom he has redeemed through his blood as a high priest. He redeemed us through his blood. He said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Ephesians 1, 7. He redeemed us through his blood. So that you say so. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. He redeemed us. You have to know this. So that when you begin to apply the hyssop on the blood. When your tongue is on the blood. You know how we pray. How we are actually taught to pray. Is when we are praying. See. The word believe is actually translated the sea. When God was speaking to Jeremiah, Jeremiah wants to say, what seest thou? In other words, what do you believe? What you believe is what your heart could see. When God opens the eyes of your faith to see what you are saying, he said, what you pray, believe. In other words, what you are praying for, be seeing it. Be seeing what you are saying. So if I'm speaking the blood of Jesus, in my imagination, in my subconscious or superconscious mind, I should be seeing the blood. That's why Apostle Paul said, when you are taking Holy Communion, and you are taking it as an ordinary bread, he said you are taking it unworthily. And many have taken it unworthily, and they died, and they are sick. He said, no, when you are taking it, be seeing Jesus on the cross. Be seeing that the blood is just being poured. Be seeing the blood flesh. When you are speaking that blood, see where you are fetching the blood. Splaying the blood on your family. See where you are fetching the blood. Splaying the blood on your finances. See where you are fetching the blood. When you are praying, be seeing what you are praying for. Picture it. You are praying for a car. Be seeing that car you are praying for. You are praying for marriage. Be seeing that wedding. Picture the wedding in your mind. You are praying for a document. Picture where you are receiving the document. That is what he's telling us here. That is what he's telling us here. When you pray, see what you are praying for. If you can see it, you can receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And number two way, number the second way on how, on where we plead the blood of Jesus, or how we plead the blood of Jesus is to yourself. You plead the blood to yourself. Apply the blood, sprinkle the blood to yourself. To your body. To your soul, to your spirit. Many of us are ignorant. We spend time to pray for our business, pray for our marriage, pray for our money, pray for this. But we don't spend time to pray for our health. When last did you apply the blood of Jesus on your body? When last did you apply the blood of Jesus on your face? Listen, by, by prophecy, I've seen beautiful ladies that we are discovered spiritual, that we are, that we are, I mean, that, that we are disfigured spiritually. Their beauty was taken from them. If you see their face scattered, battered, destroyed. Do you know what your face means in the name of the spirit? Do you know the impli I mean, do you know the, the spiritual, the, 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 the spiritual implication of your face? When the enemy targets your face, how well last you apply the blood of Jesus on your face, on your bones, in your blood, in your soul, in your spirit, on your legs, your ankles, your bones, your joints, your tendons, your eyes, your ears, your heart, your nostrils, your brain. When last did you apply the blood of Jesus in your body? Somebody came and they gave you injection in your body. 
you wake up. I cancel it. You cancel it with what? I cancel it. I cancel it. You cancel it with what? I reject it. I reject it. You reject it with what? By the blood of Jesus that bought me. By the blood of Jesus that redeemed me. Every sickness in my body. This body is redeemed. This body is no longer my body. Because when he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he was crucified, I was crucified. When he resurrected, I resurrected. Ah, Apostle Paul said, for we know that if one man died, then we all died. We, we died in him. When he was crucified, we are crucified. When he was buried, we were buried. When he resurrected, you say, not this body. This body is not your temple. This body is not your temple. I am bought with a price. I am purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. You begin to declare it. You begin to pray it. You keep saying it. Do you know what? When you pray and say something, Satan wants to know if you mean what you're saying. And God wants to be sure that you believe what you're saying. Satan will test if you know what you're saying. And God will be sure. God wants to know if you believe what you're saying. I told us that the first time Peter started crying when he was sinking in the water and he was crying to Jesus. Jesus didn't respond until he became serious and started crying loud. Mother! Save me, Master! Save. Jesus said, okay, now. He stretched his hand and rescue him. When you start praying, when you start declaring a word in the Bible, if you borrow a revelation and it doesn't have integral parts, it has not dominated your heart, it's not yet part of you. When that revelation is not yet yours, it's very, it won't last. It won't last. You pray that prayer once, but you didn't receive it. You already heard it and said it out. You heard it and prayed it. It has not dominated your heart. Satan, no. That prayer does not produce anything. Until you, that revelation is personalized. Until that revelation has become yours. That you begin to declare it from your hearts. From your spirits. And your spirits connect with the spirit and cry at Abba Father. And cry at Abba Father. And the devil know that this one has found the truth. This one has known the truth. This one has seen the truth. This one has believed the truth. For you shall know the truth. What do you mean by you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free? What, how do you know the truth? The, the word knowledge, that epignosis is there, means you have become what you know. When you can no longer be separated from what you know. Some of us, there's what you learned in nursery primary school years ago that you cannot forget. It's not everything. But there are something inside of you you know that cannot be changed. Until you become what you know and you are praying with that understanding. You are praying with that revelation. You are praying with that mindset, that belief, that audacity and authority. When we pray with fear, is it because we don't know who we are? We don't know. We have not believed the word of God enough. That's why we pray with fear and worry. Listen, Jesus was speaking, and they came to him and said, "Who is this man? Why were they worried? What makes Jesus different from other scribes, the teachers of the law, and what differentiated him? They say he speaketh with authority. He speaketh as the one that has authority." I told us that there are, there are biblical character, there are Christian character that if you demonstrate, people will misunderstand you. They will say you are proud. They will say you are arrogant. They will say you are boasting. But they don't understand. When Jesus spoke, they said he spoke as one that has authority. Hey! None of the scribes ever spoken like that. None of the leaders of the law ever spoken like that. None of the Pharisees ever spoken like that. But he declared, but they said, for with authority, he commanded even the unclean spirit, and they leave. Jesus speaks with authority. That they said, ah, do you see how he commands demons? That man speaks with authority. Now, until a Christian, you can't pray with authority. Look at what it is in, in Luke 4, 36. He said, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves. Listen, they were all amazed. Take note of this. Look here. They were all amazed and spake among themselves. Say, what a word is this? This is so amazing. 
We have never seen this before. What's happened? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. He speak with authority. You see a Christian that is very intimidating, very intimidated, fearful, approaching the throne of grace with fear instead of with faith, with boldness that we may obtain. He speaks as one that has authority. That's why the disciples, remember when Jesus died, they tried to preach the gospel, they couldn't, they were scared because they are going to kill them. And the Bible said, they returned back to pray for boldness. Their prayer point was, Lord, give us boldness to declare. After they prayed, the spirit of boldness came upon them. And they came out. And they said, men and brethren, this Jesus whom you crucified, the same he came. And they look at him. They, see, they were looking at the face of the, uh, Stephen as if they were looking at the angel. Apostle Paul preached like that. And King Agrippa said, Ah, you nearly persuaded me to be a Christian. Bible says, with authority, they speak. A Christian prays with authority. And authority comes with the revelation of who Jesus is. The revelation of the blood of Jesus. When you have known that this is who you are, you tell the devil, get out! I remember those days, if you keep yam or bread in the village, and you see either chicken or goat, Eating what you kept or eating your rice. What do you do? I watched one video, one comedy. It was real. This child, uh, this little baby, he was holding something, that biscuit or something this baby was eating. And there is this uh, either dog or chicken or something that came and was eating from the baby's hand. And maybe I think it was chicken, was eating from the baby's hand. And baby was crying for somebody to come and help. Crying, crying, crying. Maybe either the mom or anybody could come and chase away the chicken so that. He will have his biscuit. But nobody was there. So this baby boy got angry and grabbed the neck of the chicken and put the head in the mouth. Eh? I watched another one where this boy, the dog, was playing with the boy and was pulling, using the mouth, pulling the shoe or the trouser, something, something like that. And this boy was crying for help, crying. Nobody was there. The boy carried the head, grabbed the dog on the neck, the small dog. The puppy dog grabbed the dog on the neck and bites the dog. I mean, the dog started crying for help. <laughs> Instead of the child crying for help, the dog was crying for help. You go to a place where situation, that's why God allow you to make that, God allow that situation to make you strong. To allow you to develop spiritual chromosomes, extra muscles, extra force, fuel of anger in your spirit. To say, no, I cannot be barren. The blood has purchased me. And you use that blood to declare. Some of us, you need to wake up. Do you know what David said? He said, I pursued my enemies. When I saw this in scripture, I said, my God. We are crying that our enemies are pursuing us. David is saying that I pursued my enemies. Many of us are running from our enemies, but there are pursuers. When you carry the blood, you pursue your enemies. When you sprinkle the blood, you pursue your enemies. When you engage the blood, you pursue your enemies. Hallelujah. I told us you apply the blood on yourself. Cover your legs in the blood of Jesus. Soak your heart in the blood of Jesus. That place you are having pain in your body. That doctor's report, that, that, that sickness that you have been diagnosed of. Soak that part in the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen. Nothing is dipped in that blood and comes out as the same. Nothing enters the blood of Jesus and comes out as the same. Dip that place in the blood. Soak that your body in the blood. Soak your health in the blood. Enough of managing your health as if this body has not been purchased with the blood. Take advantage of that blood. Number two, I say, apply the blood in your family. Plead the blood on your family. Many of us doesn't know the importance of family. See, it's better that you have family and you're quarreling with them than you don't have at all. I asked a woman that the marriage was separated. 
I say, how do you feel now than when we are together? I say, I, I prefer we are together and quarreling you know, than loneliness. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. Wake up at night to release the blood of Jesus on your family. Release the blood of Jesus on your family name. On your siblings. Pray, release the blood of Jesus on your wife. Blood of Jesus on your husband. Blood of Jesus on your children. Bro, call their names. Hi, can, can I show you what Job did? Can you, can you bring Job chapter 1? Is it verse 9? Job, Job, Job chapter 1. Is it verse 9? Let me show you something. In the book of Job. Make Koro Paradato Sataha. Job chapter 1. Okay, let me show you Job. Just Job chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 10. Job is chapter, verse 5. Okay, he said, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning. And offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Listen. He was praying for his family. He was offering the blood. He was ple pleading the blood on the number of his family. Calling their name. Not I cover all my children. No. Call their names. Call their names. I cover all my siblings in blood. Jesus. No. Call their names. Mention their names. Oh, Rabbi Hunter Shataha. Listen. The Bible said, and Job will kill when if it job will kill each lamb for each child that this blood is for this one 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 now he applied the blood on every member of the family calling their names one after the other mention your children one after the other cover them in their blood in the blood of jesus you see that he said, number of them all, according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did, God, thus did Job continually. He will offer the blood for mercy. Offer the blood for forgiveness. Offer the blood for protection. Offer the blood for healing. Release the blood on your family. Pray for your family members. Be an intercessor. Pray for your siblings. Pray for your in-laws. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your... Offer the blood. You know, in Exodus, when, in Exodus chapter 12, when they were told to, to kill a lamb, they said, kill lambs according to the number of the family. Every family should bring lambs according to the number. Each family represents a blood. Each person represents the blood. So plead the blood according to the number of your family. Call their names in the place of prayer and begin to pour the blood on their head. You say, Lord, whatever sin my sister is living in that is causing that delay in marriage by the blood of the Lamb that speak better than the blood of Abel. Let mercy speak. Let the blood speak. Let our sin be forgiven. Let our sin be forgiven. Lord, I speak mercy by the blood of the Lamb. I speak mercy upon my brother. I speak mercy upon my mother. I speak protection by the blood of the Lamb. I speak healing on their health by the blood of the Lamb. I speak salvation in my family upon that my brother by the blood of the lamb. That one that is smoking. That one that is stealing. That one that is not a Christian. Let the blood of Jesus rescue their soul from hell. They will not go to hell. They will not perish in hell. The blood has been shed. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Blood rescue them. Blood of Jesus rescue them. Call their names. Call their names. Listen. You know how much your prayer works. People cry when they don't pray. Let me tell you this. People cry. When people lose their loved ones, they cry. Because they never prayed for that person. You get angry the way they behave. But have you prayed for them? You get angry on what they are doing. Have you prayed for them? Have you pleaded the blood on their behalf? Have you really, have you, have you spread, use the hyssop of your tongue to spread that blood to sanctify your family? Bible said, and Job will go to sanctify the children. And do you know what happened? By the reason of spraying the blood, look at verse 10. Look at verse 10 of Job chapter, Job 1 verse 10. Look at what he said. He said, now because of that blood 
that Job sprinkles on his family. What happens? Look at when Satan came to attack the family. He couldn't penetrate. He couldn't enter anyone. He couldn't assess anyone. Look at what they said. Has not thou made an hedge round about him? And about his house? Now, he pleaded the blood on himself. Right? Satan couldn't assess him. The blood on his house. Satan couldn't come to his house. The blood on all he had on every side. The blood. When you plead the blood, he set an age all around you. That blood is for strong protection. And that brings me to number three. How do you plead the blood? How do you plead the blood? May ye so Show me Hebrew 9.19. Hebrew 9.19. Hebrew 9.19. Please, please, tonight, wake up tonight. This week, even if it's once in a month, target family prayer night, family intercessory prayer night. Even if it's once in a month, carry the pictures of those that are not around. Don't just watch their picture. Do you have their picture for the purpose? It's a point of contact. At least to help your faith. You need this point of contact to activate your spirit, to stay focused on that prayer you're praying. As you are looking at that person, stretch your hand. Begin to speak the blood of Jesus for mercy, for healing, for protection, for preservation. Call that name. That's my brother that is struggling in life. Oh, blood of Jesus. Any sacrifice, any blood sacrifice that have kept him in one spot for years. Let the blood of Jesus nullify that sacrifice. You begin to plead the blood on their lives. Look at what he said. He said, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and the scarlet and wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and on all the people. Now, when you carry the blood, you apply on everything. Look at the vessels in the house. When a priest carries the blood into the temple, the Bible says he anoints every vessels in the temple. This message is quite deep. I don't know when I'm going to finish this. It's quite deep. It sprinkles on everything that concerns you. Everything that concerns your life. Your health, your life, your family, your, 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 your possession, your properties, your belongings. Sprinkle the blood on your car. He said on all people, on every member of your family, sprinkle blood on them. Plead the blood of Jesus on your family members. On your stepwives, on your siblings, on your everything that concerns you. Sprinkle the blood there. And I told us this is the fourth one. On your properties, your belongings, your possessions, all you acquired. Sprinkle the blood on your car, your electronics, on your clothes, your shoes. Sprinkle the blood on your houses, your plots. Your properties. Sprinkle the blood on everything God has given you. Do you hear what Satan said to Job? He said to God that even all that belongs to him, I couldn't touch anything. Where there is blood, Satan cannot touch. Where there is blood, Satan cannot go. Sprinkle the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. How many times, when did you cover the tires of your vehicle with the blood of Jesus? When did you cover the steering with the blood of Jesus? I termize some of us, we don't know how to pray. When I pray, I, 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 I termize everything one after the other. Because Satan can put hand on your steering. He can put hand on your tire. He can put hand on the engine. I cover the engine of my car in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover the seat. It, that's why anybody that has brought a new car for me to bless, you see that I took time to anoint the steering. Anoint the pedals, the gas, the brake, the crutch, everywhere. Anoint the gear, anoint the screen, the windscreen, anoint the door, anoint everywhere. Anoint the engine, anoint the four tires, anoint everywhere. That is where we plead the blood of Jesus. When you come to your house, plead the blood of Jesus on all the doors, all the entrances, the windows, the access to your door, to your house. Anoint everywhere. Anoint every material, every property in your house. Plead the blood of Jesus. Whatever Satan has possessed, any item here that brought satanic presence, any item here that has been used for a voodoo, whatever that is here that has been used for voodoo, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus. You plead the blood of Jesus on everything. Sprinkle the blood on all the vessels. On everything. On all your belongings. Everything that concerns you. 
sprinkle the blood. When you travel to your father's house, sprinkle the blood. When you are praying for your father's house, sprinkle the blood on every trees, on the entrance, on the gate, on the fence, hey, on the roof, anywhere there is charm, on the blocks, anywhere there is charm, at the entrance, any charm buried in my family, blood of Jesus destroyed. You sprinkle the blood everywhere. You see yourself physically in your father's house. Apply even on the trees. Many trees are possessed by demons, by evil spirits. Sprinkle the blood all around. At the back of the house, I enter the toilet. I sprinkle the blood. I enter the sitting room. I sprinkle the blood. I enter the kitchen. I sprinkle the blood on all my plates. I sprinkle the blood. Let people say you are stupid. Yes! It is in the Bible. They sprinkle the blood on all the vessels. He said, even the books you are reading. Do you see that? Even your academics. Sprinkle the blood on your academics. Sprinkle the blood on the books. Is it number five or number six? Number six. I said, sprinkle the blood. Sprinkle the blood. That's in, verse, in, in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 21. On everything you have, sprinkle the blood. And number six, I say, on your career, your job. Your academics, your appointments, your interviews, your proposals, your contracts, sprinkle the blood. Spread the blood everywhere. Spread the blood on your contracts, your interview, your appointments, your career, your job. Call the name of where you are working. Cover your job in the blood of Jesus. How can you be sacked? How can you be removed? How can you have query? How can you have issues in the place of work? How can you be stagnated in one career over the years? You are not applying the blood of the Lamb. Apply the blood of Jesus on your career, on your job, on your skills, on your talent, on your giftings. Apply the blood of Jesus. You know, Satan can steal your talent. Satan can arrest your talent, can padlock your visions, your great, your, 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 your talents, your skills. What you used to know how to do. You are no longer. I told us, how do you know that your talent or your visions has been stolen or attacked? Is when the passion of zeal is dead. Something you once had passion to do that was actually ushering you into your future. All of a sudden, the zeal is dead. The passion is dead. You are now looking at your vision like a television. Before you love education, you really want to go to school. The passion to study is there. All of a sudden, you are just tired. You are even afraid of school. You ask anytime they mention school. You know you want, but you are now scared. The enemy has stolen your academic life. Apply the blood of Jesus. Before you like going to work, you want to put effort. Now, if not for money, the zeal, even the passion to go for the work, or to look for a job is no more there. The person is just there. What is depression? Depression is a spiritual attack that takes away people's passion and zeal. The zeal to pursue anything new is no more there. The passion to go for anything new, to acquire anything, that thing that makes your life joyful, that puts your life on a speed, is no more there. The life is now stagnated. The person is not going forward in life and is okay where he is. You need to apply the blood of Jesus on your career, on your academics, your projects, your visions, your dreams. Apply the blood of Jesus on your goals. You want to be a doctor, you are not applying the blood of Jesus there. You want to be a lawyer, you are not applying the blood of Jesus there. On your visions, your career, your goal. Blood of Jesus on my ideas. Blood of Jesus on my goals. Blood of Jesus on my medical pursuits. Blood of Jesus on my lawsuit pursuits. Blood of Jesus on my engineering career. Blood of Jesus on my, on my job. Blood of Jesus on my proposal. On my project. Blood of Jesus. You apply the blood of Jesus on your career. He said you apply the blood everywhere. And the next place you can apply the blood, you can ple plead the blood of Jesus, is your relationship. Listen, in Matthew chapter 27, in verse 4, the man that destroyed Jesus was his relation. The man that sold Jesus was his relation. Let me tell us this. Every enmity starts with friendship. A stranger does not fight you. A stranger does not hate you. A stranger does not gossip you. A stranger does not dislike you. A stranger does not hurt you. Let me tell us this. When have you discovered that when husband and wife fought for those that divorce and quarrel, the same measure of love they once had for each other become the same measure of hatred. They now see that if you try to say to husband and wife that quarrel, you can see hatred, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. What happened? Satan has destroyed their love. 
and turn them against each other. Pray for your relationship. Pray the blood of Jesus on your relationship with your parents, with your siblings, with your spouse, with your, with your neighbors, with your colleagues. Relationship is very powerful. Listen, no matter how much you know God, you are not dealing with angels on this earth. You are dealing with human beings. Pray for your relationship. When you notice some misunderstanding and argument going on, begin to pray. When you notice that, when you see these signs, begin to play the blood of Jesus on that relationship. Tell the devil, you're a liar. You can't separate me from my family. Devil, you're a liar. You can't separate my children from me. Devil, you're a liar. You can't separate my husband from me. You can't take my wife away from me. No! But we are ignorant. What you do is you call somebody to report your husband and gossip your husband. Call somebody to report your wife and gossip your wife. Call somebody to... Some parents, some Christians are behaving like you are calling police on your children. When police come, they want to separate your children from you. Uh, one of our members told us, he called the police on the son. And the police told the son, he said, it's like your mom is not treating you well. You can call social service so that they'll take you out from your mom. Or do you want us to take you away from your mom? She said, no, I don't want to leave my mom. I'm the only child. If I leave my mom, she's going to die. He said, no, but she's not treating you well. She, he came back and told the mom what police told him. The woman was like, what? I called police to come and help me. They want to take my son away. Who has they ever helped? Call upon the blood of Jesus. Plead the, plead the blood of Jesus on your children, on your relationship with your family, your relationship with your colleagues. You have an issue in your place of work. They hate you. You just came, oh, they are racist. They are racist. It's not enough. Plead the blood of Jesus. People, they have attacked others and they succeeded. Plead the blood of Jesus. It is an error for you to be removed in your place of work. David prayed the prayer. He said, let not the hand of the wicked remove me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. It is an error for the hand of man to remove you. Plead the blood of Jesus on your relationship. I don't understand this, my lecturer. The way he responds to me, Joe, is like he doesn't like me. Father, any spirits, whatever sacrifice, whatever the enemy is doing, to so use this lecturer to fail me, I release the blood of Jesus. I scatter whatever they did. I release the blood of Jesus. You call upon the name of the lecturer and release the blood of Jesus in that relationship. I don't know why this man is not talking to me again. I don't know why this one is blocking me. I release the blood of Jesus in my relationship with my siblings. I release the blood of Jesus. Any power attacking my relationship, the blood of Jesus. Is the blood of Jesus in your relationship. Many people think that relationship is carnal. You now see a lot of posts. You know, we are living by motivational speakers. You know, if somebody do this, you do that. If a guy loves you, these are the signs to know that a guy loves you. If somebody wanna date you, this is the signs to know that the guy wanna date you. If somebody leave me in this, the, the, the signs it does not recognize personality difference. It does not what they call personality traits. It doesn't recognize the, 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 the difference in people, personalities. It doesn't recognize that people differ. That somebody can love you for what they want, and the day you think that that is no longer there, it goes off. You need the, 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 the blood of Jesus in your relationship. Why this person? Anytime we want to discuss it, we turn to quarrel. You are worried that this person is not talking to you. But anytime you want to talk, it's quarrel. Anytime the person hears your voice, it hurts him. Let me tell us this. Years ago, even my elder brother was living with hated me with passion. He told me one day that anytime he sees me, he gets angry. Just by seeing me, he got angry. Eh? Then I had one man I was working with, I was working for, mention it. I said, my brother said it. This man said it. This man didn't know my brother. My brother didn't know this man. On another person, man. Ah. I said, I need to go and handle this thing. I need to go and handle this thing. And when that altar was broken, when that altar was broken, I wear clothes I don't buy. I enjoy grace naturally. Why? Pray for your relationship. Pray for your relationship. Pray up to today. I still pray. Pray especially, especially what I call um, horizontal relationship. Relationship of those above you. Relationship of those you are benefiting from. A few days ago, we celebrated our Father's uh, Founder's Day. And I sent him seed. And he prayed for me. And he was so happy. I shared this, like, some testimonies. Now, I, I, I made sure that that relationship, there was a time, there was 
somebody was trying to report me and destroy my relationship with my father and the Lord. I said, never. Nobody can come in between my, me and my father and the Lord. My covering. Never. The devil, you are a liar. Satan was trying to tell me he doesn't like you. He's defending the other person against you because you are this, because of this. I said, never, 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 never. I will never. I, I, I mean, from the one, I said it as a principle. I will never have issue with my covering. I will never, never. I begin to love him. One day he called me and was very angry. Ha! Ah. By the time he finished talking and dropped the phone, I sent him a message. I said, Daddy, I love you. When he saw that message, he called me back. He was angry at the other time. The next time he called me, he began to pray for me. Pray for your relationship. You notice the way your father and your mother is treating you. You get angry. You want to pay back with hatred, pay back with attack, pay back with fight. Pray the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus on her heart. Plead the blood of Jesus in his heart. You see the way your child is misbehaving. The way your daughter is misbehaving. Begin to speak the blood of Jesus. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus on their hearts, in their soul. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. You see the way they are acting. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. You see the way that your husband is talking to you. The way he's mis misbehaving now. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus in your communication. Do you know there are some phone calls that before you pick. Bring my phone. There are some phone calls. I think you should be anywhere there. Before you, before you, you pick a call, this phone, ha, he's calling me today. Hope he's not another quarrel. Blood of Jesus. Lord, I cover every conversation, every discussion. Whatever we are going to discuss today, I cover in the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus, take over the atmosphere. Blood of Jesus Christ. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. Um, he said, um, the person that wanted to shout, that wanted to quarrel and curse you, the voice will come down. Mm. How are you? Hope everything is okay. He, what he wanted to say, not that it's going to cause problem, but the atmosphere is not conducive for that quarrel. He said, I just called to check on you. Hope everything is okay. Bye. He called the call. You say, ah, he never called to check on me before. She never called. Why? The blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus on your relationship. Somebody start talking to you. You notice that all that have talked to you before and they left. This one that is coming, that is talking to you. What is the evidence? What is the assurance that is not going to live, walk away like others? Begin to plead the blood of Jesus on the name. Plead the blood of Jesus on that relationship. Satan hates relationship. Satan hates relationship. The devil attack relationship. The wicked ones attack relationship. Plead the blood of Jesus on your relationship. With your children. With your colleagues. With your lecturers. With any human being you have to do it, plead the blood of Jesus. If there is anything I like doing academically, is if anything I like doing is like presentation or, in or, or interview, because it gives me opportunity to talk. There is anointing in my mouth that if I talk, <laughs> I never failed interview. If I talk, if I don't know your question, I will use something else and answer. And just for, for hearing me talking, you give me what I want. Hallelujah. And another area, another way you plead the blood of Jesus. Another area you plead the blood of Jesus is on your money, your finances. That's number seven or eight. Number eight, on your finances. Satan hates wealth. Satan hates prosperity. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. Please, money is spiritual. Please, money is spiritual. Remember, when Judas paid before they took Jesus. These people are the leaders. They are in charge. They don't need anybody's permission to arrest whoever they want to arrest. But why did they pay Judas Iscariot before arresting Jesus? Because he was his blood relative. He has a relation with Jesus. They have to pay somebody. They have to be a transaction before they collected him. And when Judas returned the money, they rejected the money and they called the money blood money. Money is spiritual. Plead blood on your money. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. As you receive your salary, before you start spending it, plead the blood of Jesus on it. Some of us, we are not the only ones spending your salary. The powers of your father's house are spending your money with you. Family authors, family idols, witches and wizards are spending your money with you. Plead the blood of Jesus. 
for your money. There are some places you go to buy things. Before you do transactions, if you have the spirit of God, your spirit tells you that the atmosphere is not right. You begin to plead, money, plead the blood of Jesus on your money. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. Some people, their generation are poor because their ancestors gave money to a beggar. Some people, their generation are poor because their ancestors gave money to a witch doctor. The money, the family money is still in the altar. I told us of a pastor, my friend, the Lord prophesied to, that the family we are going to throw sacrifice to the water world and they threw their money there. So anytime this pastor gathered money, the water spirit will come and collect the money spiritually. Physically, he became poor. That's why, have you not seen some people, no matter how much you help them, no matter how much you give to them, it is never enough. Give them money today. They'll ask me. When my brother was asking me for money, I said, certain time, I said, your problem is no money. Go and handle foundation. Your problem is no money. He said, I know you're a man of God. I know you're spiritual. What is my problem? I said, go and deal with your foundation. If anybody give you 10 million, it will not last. I told a pastor friend in Lagos some time ago. He was asking for help. They gave him the first help. The money destroyed. The second one, I told, I said, man of God, your foundation, where you're coming from, you know where you're coming from. Go and handle your foundation. This is not, I said, you need to invoke the blood. Plead blood on your money. Plead blood on your money. That's why anybody, any Christian, that the money is not connected to the altar, cannot stand the attack of the devil on their finances. You see them walk, 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 walk. Is it that they make sure you don't use that money on you? See, I thought I have once preached a message on that. That Satan has a way of spending your money from for you. Is it that they make you commit some offenses? Either break speed limits, red light, some insurance, some mistakes that you're paying for, or they make they use people to collect that money from you in a week or in a month before you receive salary. Ten people from your family will call you and beg you for money. It's the same family idol that is using those people to collect that money from you. You will give and give and give. People will just be calling you and be begging, begging. Sometimes you think you are helping. <laughs> if you are ignorant, you think you are just helping. But they are just using that channel to make sure that that money gets out of your hand. Sometimes they hear that somebody is sick. They will just look for means. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. Do you hear what Satan said? That he could not touch Job's money because Job pleaded the blood of Jesus on his money. He pleaded the blood. He sanctified the blood. He sacrificed the blood. He poured the blood on his wealth. That Satan could not touch his money. Plead the blood on your finances. He said, do you know what Satan said? He said, I cannot touch his, his substances, his wealth, his money. He couldn't touch any of that. Plead the blood of Jesus on your income, on your salary. On your enemies. Every day when you pray, pray for your money. Pray for your finances. Satan hates wealth. Satan hates riches. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. And number nine. Is it number nine? I said, plead the blood of Jesus in your house. I've mentioned that before. In your house. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. In your rooms, your bedroom, your beds. Everywhere in the house. The curtains. There are many that are living with Satan in their house. Enter your house and begin to speak the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus in your house. In every item in your house, speak the blood of Jesus. How can you be in the room and somebody is making noise in the kitchen? How can you be in the house and somebody is walking on the ceiling? And there are, you heard, there are some things we hear in the prophecy that sometimes, if not that you have trusted this voice, my friend, the Lord said the voice you've been hearing over the years, you know that voice. If not that we have trusted this voice enough, there are some things I hear in the prophetic that I struggle to say. Like when I say, there's somebody you are scared of entering your house. You are afraid of your house because of some strange presence. And the woman said, for over two years, you heard that? She has not slept in her bedroom. She doesn't enter that bedroom. She's scared that a demon is living there. And another woman messaged me that she, has, she, has, she wants to leave her house, that she's scared of staying in her house. That many times she's going and sleep in somebody's house, she's scared of staying in her house. There's no blood of Jesus there. You open a door, a spirit will close it. You close the door before you sleep, a spirit will open it. You off the lights, a spirit will on it. You on the light, a spirit will come and off it. People are going through a lot in their houses. 
You are sleeping, you are seeing that there are some people are eating in the kitchen, making noise. When you come, you don't see anybody. The pot that you put inside the cupboard is none on the, on the gas. Was it not one of our sister that was telling me the house she rocked everywhere and came out and said the food she dropped on the table. The spirit came and carried the food. <laughs> Physically, not spiritually. In the house. A spirit came and carried the food and disappeared. Late in the evening or the next day, they brought the plate. They finished the food and brought, oh, yeah, my shut her. <laughs> you know, if you are, if you are kind of, you feel like, oh, this thing is not real. What are they talking about? I told us of a pastor friend, a man that I know who doesn't believe that those things is real. The wife was going through attack. A spirit would appear to the wife and do some things in the house and sit with the woman and the wife was telling, please, call Pastor Fidelis. Listen, come and pray for me. I'm going through this attack. The man said, it's a psychological issue. It's the belief. It's your mindset. It's what you believe. So the man invited me and said, well, Pastor, I actually call you to pray, not because I believe it, but, you know, for psychological reasons, so that my wife will be calm and believe you prayed. I said, okay. I said, Lord, if this spirit is cast out now, this man will never believe that this woman is going through attack. I said, let him see what this woman is saying. Let the same attack come to him. That was my prayer. And I left. You know when a pastor is praying and speaking in tongues and you don't pray what you hear. I finished the prayer and left the house. <laughs> I went to program. Guess what? The man came back from work one day. I told us. Came back and greeted the wife in the kitchen. And the wife said, oh, you are welcome. I, I thought I was finished cooking before you came back. And he greeted the wife in the kitchen. And went upstairs to the bedroom. And went to the bedroom and saw the wife on the bed. And the wife said, honey, welcome. Come to the bed. And the, the man said, what? I saw my wife in the kitchen. I just climbed the stair. There's no two staircase. There's no another door to the room. Is this one door. I did it. There's no how my wife, there's no when she boycotted me. The man was wondering. He left the one in the room. I went to the kitchen, and the wife said, oh, you are hungry. You have come back. Oh, just wait now. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'll, I will soon be done. When I'm done, I'm going to call you. The man was dumbfounded. He climbed on the room again. He said, come and rest now. I know you're tired. Come to the bed. The same clothes, the same hair tie, the same face, the same voice, the same tone. The wife has become two. And he called the first son. If I call the name now, the way I'm talking about them. He called the first son and said, come on, come. As the son is coming to the room, the one in the room disappeared. He went to the kitchen. I saw the one in the kitchen is still there. And he was shivering. He called, pastor, pastor. I said, no, it's the imagination of the mind. It's just an imagination of the mind. Baba E.A. Adeboye, the senior pastor in Redeemed Church, said years ago, the reason why anywhere he's going to, he's traveling with his wife, is that years ago, he was going somewhere to preach. He was to travel to preach. As he left, all of a sudden, a, a demon looked exactly like he, he, the boy. The Bible said that Satan appeared like angel of light. They can use the face of your pastor. If you are not wise, you run away from your pastor. They can use the face. They appear as the angel of light. They can use the face of your mother to attack you. Your mother may be innocent too. It's not anybody's face. Everybody's face they used to attack you that is a witch. Some of them is the family in uh, the altar in the family. You must be spiritually sound to the son. Is this one actually a witch or is a victim? Baba, he had the boy. They said, the, man, the, 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 the pastor said, the, the, the wife, as he left, a spirit, the same clothes he wore and left. The same bag he carried and left. The same head, the same voice, the same height, the same everything. Exactly like he, uh, the boy. I'm talking about Pastor Enoch, the boy. He's verifiable. He said it. He's on YouTube. The man dressed exactly like him and came to the wife and said, sorry, the flight was canceled. The program was canceled. Um, for some reasons, the program was canceled. And they called the wife, can you come to the bedroom? And the wife said, yeah. Could my husband 
you didn't call me that you are coming back. How come? By now, you're supposed to be on air. Then I should come to the room. My husband has never done something like that. Just came back and said, I should come to the room. It takes spiritual discernment. And the wife picked the phone to call the husband. And Baba Yi Adebo picked the call and said, I'm just boarding. And she dropped the call and went to the room. The one in the room has disappeared. Plead the blood of Jesus in your house. There are many houses that are having satanic visitations. Demonic visitation, demonic presence all the time. There are people that Satan are visiting day and night in their houses. There are people that Satan is living in their house with them. Tell the devil that you did not pay this house rent with me. When I rented this house, it's not me and you. It's not me and you that is paying this rent. It's not me and you that we are giving this house. You devil, get out and release the blood of Jesus. Every strange presence be cast out. He said, when the demon of death and poverty, when they see the blood in your house, they will pass over. When the spirit of destruction see the blood in your house, they will pass over. I can tell you that where majority of the attack happens is in your house. Where you sleep at night is very important. Many attack happens at night when you are sleeping. Plead the blood of Jesus in the house. And the last, one, the next one is it number nine or ten? I don't know. I'm, I'm not numbering again. Number ten. I said your wearings. Plead the blood of Jesus on your clothes. Especially ladies, that cortex, that lipstick, that perfume, that wig, that weave on, that earrings, that neck links, plead the blood of Jesus. On your makeups, plead the blood of Jesus. Many of them are produced. See, Satan owns the world of beauty. The world of makeup. There is one thing I found that 90% of ladies that have man-made spirits always go into makeups. What do you call it? Modeling. Makeup. Fix those that fix nails, eyelashes. 90% of those that have strong marine spirits, that is the only business they have passion for. Been in deliverance over the years. 90% of girls or men that have those demonic spirits, these are the things they go for. When my wife was to do wedding, they were to bring, they brought, they brought a man that were going to do the makeup. I look at it, I say, this man is a gay. There is a marine spirit in him. This man is a gay. I say, where are you bringing him from? He say, oh, he's best. He's best in the town. In Dodo Portacourt, he's well known. He's very popular. He's a strong person. He's the one that do this, even with politicians. I say, this one is a gay. And somebody that knew him very well said, ha, ah, I had you rejected that guy. I said, yes. He said, why? I said, my spirit said no. He said, I know you're a prophet. When they said that guy is going to uh, take you, do your wife, and they said, no, 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 no. Pastor Fidel is, he has his spirit of God. He's not going to allow that. When I said, I said this one, never. Then there was one I found. I said, who is that? Bring her to me. I didn't know that that one was the same person that does mama's makeup. That is my wife own. The same person that does mama's mama makeup. It is the one that they brought that did my wife's own. But many of us are not, you just enter the saloon, you just enter anywhere. Pray on your earrings. Pray on your earrings. Pray on your clothes. Pray the blood of Jesus on those clothes. Pray the blood of Jesus. Some of us, you are not spiritually sensitive to know that the day you wore these clothes, your body reacted. Since you made that hair, since you went that place, since you wore that earrings, there is a strange dream. Some of us are not spiritually sensitive. Pray the blood of Jesus on them. As we wear it, oh, this thing is fine. Wow, blood of Jesus Christ. And the last one, plead the blood of Jesus on your, on your food and drinks. No matter how in the haste you are to eat in a restaurant, plead the blood of Jesus. We are certain possessed these days is hospitals, schools, markets, restaurants. Plead the blood of Jesus on whatever you eat and drink. Don't be in a haste. Lord. Even if you cook that food in your house, plead the blood of Jesus on it. Plead the blood. How come during deliverance you see people vomiting more? Plead the blood of Jesus on everything you eat or drink. On everything you wear, your shoe. As soon as you're bought it, plead the blood of Jesus. Be a conscious Christian 
carry this blood along. Be on your feet. You are the Lord that he lets me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord that he lets me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your words and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Now you are going to plead the blood of Jesus in your family. Start with your family. Your loved ones, your siblings, your children, your spouse, your younger ones, your elder ones, your in-laws, begin to plead the blood of Jesus. 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 Anyone under any covenant of darkness, anyone that Satan has programmed for death, blood of Jesus intervene. Blood of Jesus intervene. Blood of Jesus intervene. I speak the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood. I sprinkle the blood. I sprinkle the blood in my father's house, at the gates, at the entrance, on my children, on my father's name, on my future on my career. Begin to release the blood. Release the blood on your family. Release the blood on your academics. Release the blood on your finances. The blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Every sacrifice working against my career. I destroy your power by the blood of Jesus. Every covenant working against my lifting be destroyed in the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, make it as the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, rescue my brothers, rescue my sisters, deliver them, deliver all from swans members, deliver all our online members, Marakata, the blood of Jesus Christ, 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 in Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen, I told us, you have to be intentional about it. You have to itemize. Say, bring words with you and turn to the Lord. Take words with you and turn to the Lord. You have to use words. Jesus said, when you pray, say, you must be saying something. Bible said, and the words of Solomon please the Lord. Solomon was busy saying, have you ever read the prayer of Solomon? Have you ever read the prayer of David? If you are busy mentioning things one after the other. Mentioning things one after the other. You are going to spread the blood of Jesus Christ. Spread the blood on your father. Spread the blood on your mother. On your children. Call their names. The blood of Jesus Christ. Any unrepentant sibling. Anyone under addiction. The blood of Jesus Christ. I speak with the blood of my father's house. Any child that buried. That is fighting my rising. I release the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, destroy their chants. The blood of Jesus, destroy their sacrifice. Blood of Jesus, destroy their covenant. Blood of Jesus, destroy every foundational poverty, every family poverty, every heritage affliction. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, destroy, 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 destroy every oppression of darkness. Be consumed in the blood, 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 be consumed in the blood. Be consuming the blood. Be consuming the blood. Be destroyed in the blood. Every family altar rising against my finances. Every blood sacrifice. Every animal blood that is written against my name. Be nullified by the blood of Jesus. 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 In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Now. You are going to release the blood in every area of your life. Your relationship, your career, your vision, 
your destiny, your academics, your Bible say it to every vessel of the altar. You are a vessel. Sprinkle that blood on your finances. Sprinkle that blood on your career, on your vision, on your relationship, on your clothes. Sprinkle the blood on your soul, in your body, in your blood. The blood of Jesus. 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 The blood of the Lamb, 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 destroy, destroy every activity of darkness, every power of the enemy, blood destroy, every spirit of failure on my destiny, blood destroy, break it to Saletaha, blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ on my prophecy. Blood of Jesus Christ in OFM Swansea. Blood of Jesus Christ in my ministry. Blood of Jesus Christ on my finances. Blood of Jesus Christ. Rescue my finances. Deliver my finances. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Blood of Jesus Christ on my vehicle. Blood of Jesus Christ on my name. Blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ on my career, blood of Jesus Christ on my academics, blood of Jesus Christ in my mind, on my body, on my soul, blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ, Maracata Shata, Caparado Scoto, Preketo Saleta, Ricata Shabarada, the blood of Jesus, Nullify, Nullify, every class of the wicked, the blood of Jesus, Merecosita, Ricata Teteto, Parada Cashira Teta, blood of Jesus Christ, 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 blood of Jesus Amen. Your family is covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your career is covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your relationship covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your finances in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your health in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your name in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your future in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your children in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your health in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your academics in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. In your dream, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. I cover your bears in the blood of Jesus. I cover your clothes in the blood of Jesus. I cover your rooms in the blood of Jesus. I cover your application in the blood of Jesus. Your proposal in the blood of Jesus. Your appointment in the blood of Jesus. Your interview in the blood of Jesus. Your dream in the blood of Jesus. Your makeup in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, 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 in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wave your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Say, I am covered in the blood. I am covered in the blood. I am soaked in the blood. I am soaked in the blood. Nothing can destroy me. I am hidden in the blood. I am purchased in the blood. I am blood. secured in the blood. I am secured in, in the, the name of Jesus. Amen. Say so the blood is upon me. The blood is upon me. The blood is on my finances. The blood is on my finances. The blood is in my future. My the blood is in my relationship. The blood is in my marriage is covered in the blood. My children are covered in the blood. My calling is covered in the blood. My destiny is covered in the blood. I am covered in the blood. I am covered in the blood. In the blood of Jesus Christ. In the blood of Jesus Christ. My family is rescued. In the blood of Jesus Christ. My destiny is rescued. In the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Listen. Bible said in Job 1 verse 10, he said, you blessed him. He set an age around everything he has because of the blood and blessed him because of the blood. When you apply the blood of Jesus, you have blessings. There is blessings in the blood. Blessings in the blood. He said the, the, in Revelation chapter 5, chapter 5 in verse 9, he said the lamb that was slain to receive riches 
and blessings. There is blood, there is riches and blessings and strength in the blood of the Lamb. There is honor. He said the Lamb that was slain to receive. He said there's some revelation. He said the Lamb that was slain. Verse Revelation chapter 5. Okay. He said, no, not in verse 9. Revelation 5, verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. He said, and has made us unto kings, priests, and okay. Continue, verse 11. And beheld, I heard a voice. I'm coming. I'll get it. I'll get it. In the book of Revelation, he said, that was slain to receive riches and honor and glory and wealth and blessings. Say, Lord, bless me by the blood. I receive the blessings in the blood of Jesus. The blessings in the blood of Jesus. Blessings in the blood of Jesus. Riches in the blood of Jesus. Strength in the blood of Jesus. Honor in the blood of Jesus. Open your mouths. Open your mouths to receive glory, to receive wealth, to receive honor, to receive breakthrough in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus, I receive wisdom. In the blood of Jesus, I receive strength. In the blood of Jesus. Jesus. I receive honor in the blood of Jesus. I receive glory in the blood of Jesus. I receive blessings in the blood of Jesus. 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 My blessings. My blessings. My blessings. I receive blessings. I receive honor. I receive glory. I receive honor. I receive strength in the blood of Jesus. 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 I receive Glory. I receive wealth. I receive knowledge. I receive wisdom. I receive abundance in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. I receive blessings by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My blessings are released. I receive honor. I receive power. I receive victory in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. I receive blessings. Marital blessings. Galita blessings. Academy blessings. Galia blessings. Blessings, marital blessings, spiritual blessings, and receive blessings by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb. I receive riches in the blood of Jesus, 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 in the blood of Jesus. I receive healing in the blood of Jesus. I receive deliverance in the blood of Jesus. I receive forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say I am covered in the blood of Jesus. I am Jesus. covered in the blood of my Jesus. My going out and coming in are covered in the blood. My going out and coming in are covered with the blood. My children are covered in the blood of Jesus. My children are covered in the blood my of Jesus. My name is covered in the blood of Jesus. My name is covered in the blood my of Jesus. My image covered in the blood of Jesus. My pictures Jesus. are covered in the blood of Jesus. My pictures are covered. Jesus. My identity is covered in the blood of Jesus. My identity is covered in the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From today, I declare you are covered. You are covered in the blood of Jesus. 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 Amen. You are covered in the blood of Jesus. Anywhere you are watching us from, that interview you are going for, that application is covered in the blood of Jesus. Your relationship is covered in the blood of Jesus. Your marriage is covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your academics are covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your properties, your houses, your cars are covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. I cover your blood in the blood of Jesus. I cover your soul in the blood of Jesus. I cover your body in the blood of Jesus. I cover your spirit in the blood of Jesus. I cover your bodies in the blood of Jesus. Every part of your body that is experiencing pain, receive healing by the blood of Jesus. Healing in 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 the blood of Jesus. That case, that case, that court case, that police case is cancelled in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Jesus. That negation is cancelled in the blood of Jesus. That setback is destroyed in the blood of Jesus. Poverty is over in your life in the blood of Jesus. The yoke of delay is broken in the blood of Jesus. 
In the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ, begin to succeed in the Amen. blood. Begin to prosper in the blood. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, I release your marriage. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, I release your job. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, I release your promotion. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, I release your accommodation. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, I release your breakthrough. Amen. Jesus, I command you to succeed. Amen. I release your success Amen. by the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. That nightmare is over Amen. in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, I am covered in the blood. I am covered in the blood. I am soaked in the blood. The blood is upon me. The blood is upon me. The blood is all over me. The blood is in my house. The blood is in my finances. The blood is in my house. I am covered in the blood of Jesus. When Satan sees me, when Satan sees me, they will run away. They will run away. Because they will see the blood. Because they will see when the blood. When they see me, they will see the blood. When they see me, they will see the blood. And they will not touch me. And they will not touch me. When they see me, they will see the blood. When they see me, they will see the when blood. When poverty sees me, they will see the blood. When poverty sees me, they will when see the blood. When sickness sees me, they see the blood. When sickness sees me, they will see the blood. And they will run away from me. I am, I am covered in the blood. The blood of Jesus is upon me. The blood of Jesus is in me. The blood of Jesus is in my family. The blood of Jesus is on my finances. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Wave your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Are you aware now you are covered? Yes, sir. Carry that consciousness. The blood of Jesus is upon you. You shall be victorious from today. Amen. You Amen. begin to succeed from today. Amen. Where others fail, you will succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What destroy others in your family will bow to you. Amen. Altars that held others bound will submit to you. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Get your offering and begin to pray on your finances. And speak, my finances are covered in the blood. My finances are covered in the blood. My hand will not lack again. Get your offering. I am covered in the blood. My money, my income, my salary are covered in the blood of Jesus. No more losses. No more losses. No more wastes. No more delay. No more lack. My finances are covered in the blood of Jesus. I am blessed by the blood of Jesus. I am blessed in the blood of Jesus. I speak to your offering. From today, your finances are covered in the blood. Your finances are covered in the blood. The robbers will no longer come near your money. They will not come near your wealth. By the blood of Jesus, I declare your finances are covered. I set an age with the blood of the Lamb. An age on your finances by the blood of the Lamb. An age on your career by the blood of the Lamb. Your source of income will never close. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus, I declare multiple channels of income into your finances. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come and drop your offering. Wherever you are, send your offering. It is covered in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We are supposed to have a workers' meeting on Wednesday. But the reason is because I realized that on Sunday, the workers' manual did not get to everybody. So this Sunday, I'm going to um, release it, make sure that everybody has workers' manual. Then we'll have the meeting um, on Wednesday, the upper week, the next week. So this Sunday, we're going to share the workers' manual so that we have workers' meeting. And um, get ready for upper room tomorrow. It will be corrosive. There's a dimension we are operating now. Do not miss prayer for anything. You are not paying for it. You are not paying for it. It's an opportunity for you to get connected with God. Do not, don't take God out of your schedule. You cannot have a Christian life without a prayer life. You can never. Christianity is not committing the word in your memory. The word will be empty and unfruitful, unproductive. It's prayer that puts life, that gives being to the word. That makes the word productive. The word works through prayer. The word does not work alone. It works through prayer. It's prayer that activates the power of the word. So quoting the word without praying the word does not make it work. Join us tomorrow night. It's going to be corrosive. And on Sunday, will be an anointing service. It's going to be awesome. Do not miss it. Hallelujah. God bless you.
see you tomorrow in upper room. You are covered in the blood. If you are going home, tell yourself, I'm covered in the blood. As you enter your house, tell your house, this house, you are covered in the blood. Tell everywhere you are covered. Your car is covered. From today, no attack shall come near you. No evil shall befall you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Say, my head is a good head. My life is a good one. Angels are fighting for me. Greatness is following me. I am covered in the blood. Supernatural, mighty turn around. God bless you. See you tomorrow in upper room.